Right, let's try out these new trousers I've got, the Oxford Wildfire 2. Got thermal liners, waterproof, removable liners, the thermal ones are. And I've got to say, they feel so comfortable and so warm compared to the leathers. And it's even got um, like a kind of a grip grip patch on the um, on the bomb so you get a bit more better grip on the seat which I've got to say the seat's wet at the moment but it is kind of working I can I can feel it I'd imagine if the seat weren't wet it would be a lot better right so we just I'm trying the camera on the side of the helmet today See what kind of a view we got. I've never been a big fan of the side of the helmet, but um, let's see how this one looks. Uh, right, we're just dropping the bike round to my dad's today. Um, dad's gonna be welding and cutting um, the rack I brought, which attaches to my grab rail, um, which is the luggage rack, so I can get the top box on. So I'm going to try a top box on my fire blade. Probably many won't approve of it, of a sports bike with a top box, but for touring and camping, um, it makes sense. I need the room. I mean, I've got the panniers, which I, I get the stuff in. I normally strap the tent and all the other bits to around the passenger seat. But with the top box, it gives me that little bit more extra luxury where I can carry a double sleeping bag and a proper pillow and keep them dry at the same time. Because we've got our tour in May at Snowdonia. Um, although we normally do get quite good weather in May, obviously being Snowdonia, that's no guarantee. So at least that way I haven't got everything strapped to the back of the bike. I can just keep the stuff I know I need to be waterproof in the top box. And obviously go for the stuff what's a lot lighter in weight. So I'm not putting too much stress and weight on the back bit. But yeah, um, the old man, he was a mechanic for the council, um, self-employed mechanic before that, uh, HGV, anything. He can fix anything. And I looked at some of these Rentec um, luggage racks and for this bike, and we're talking the average, it's averaging around about hundred pound for a luggage rack. But the luggage rack part is quite small and it wouldn't really hold the base plate of the top box. I've done a few, I've, I bought a, a second hand rack, which is kind of a universal rack, but um, the guy I had it off said it was off his Suzuki Marauder. And the part, the luggage rack part, which is based on the base plate, is big enough for a top box bottom mount. So it's quite a large area. And I thought that's what I need. Um, did a few mock-ups, put it on the cable tied it to the bike, did a few mock-ups to see what it looked like. And it kind of fits, obviously posted the pictures on a few Fireblade forums and there was a one guy on there, he's kind of done the same, so he was in my favour. Um, but yeah, as you can imagine, the abuse you get for putting a top box on a 95 Fireblade from a Fireblade community. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't stone me. Everyone kept saying, oh, that weight at the back at high speed, you're going to lose the front, the front end's going to come up, it's going to be that light. Which, it makes sense, but I thought, but at the end of the day, this is a plastic top box, which weighs about, what, three kilograms. It's going to have a sleeping bag, a pillow, and uh, a few other light items. So we're talking, what, five kilos, six kilos at the max. 
your front end's going to come up, your front end's going to come up. Well, hold on a minute. If I'm putting six kilos on the back, I've never known a passenger weigh six kilograms or less. And at high speed, the front end will come up. At high speed, I'm going to remain snowed down here. So I don't know what their version of high speed is going to be, but I know it definitely is not going to be my version of high speed. Someone also said, oh yeah, at 130, the front will definitely come up. At 130, let's just get this right. The chances of me doing 130 miles an hour on a bike I've waited 19 years to get. It's took me 19 years to talk the wife into letting me have another bike. Obviously, I'm not flush with money, so it's not as if I can bin this and think, I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and just buy, I'll go and get another eight grand bike. So the chances of me doing 130 miles an hour at the grand old age of 44, when I, obviously I've had bikes for quite a few years, but it's been quite a few years since I regularly had a bike. So, one, I wouldn't say my experience is there for me to be doing 130 miles an hour. I wouldn't want to be doing 130 miles an hour on my fire blade. Not that I don't trust it, I mean, I don't want anything to happen to it. And there's not a chance I'm going to be doing 130 miles an hour around Snowdonia. So, what I need to think of is, what's the chances of the front end coming up when I'm driving at 30 miles an hour? Because that's probably all the speed I'm going to be getting around Snowdonia. Might get the old dual carriageway. So that part of it is not a concern to me. I'm not carrying a passenger. So I'm not expecting to have, what, 9, 10, 11, 12, whatever, st stone of a person on the back of the bike. I'm talking about 6 kilograms of a sleeping bag. But obviously... Um, Anybody would think I was Donald Trump. The amount of abuse you can get. But, I've got all confidence in me dad. He can fabricate anything. So I'd imagine he could fabricate me this luggage rack to hold my top box probably out of a couple of straws from McDonald's. But no, I said, Dad, I will provide you with the correct material. You will have a steel frame. You will have a grab rail. You will have the bike. So I'm taking the bike to him now. So Dad said I want the bike. Um, Dad's birthday today as well. He, he's the grand old age of 66. Happy birthday, Dad. Hello, Mr. Baker. Um, obviously, Dad's not doing the welding today. I wouldn't expect him to... Well, I would expect him to weld on his birthday. I think he's bang out of wood. He hasn't said, bring it round now. I'll have it done within half hour. But, no. It's his birthday. He's not going to be welding today. Um, I took the frame... Ra I basically cut the frame last night. Um, I'll put a couple of pictures up now so you can see and I'm no mechanic I've not got the greatest skill with tools but when my dad retired last year from the council he had horrendous amounts of tools and he said do you need some tools for the bike yes please dad that would be amazing so he sorted me out I've got everything sockets screwdrivers pliers you name it dad has sorted out for me thank you very much I had a hacksaw from quite a few years ago and I thought that's not when I come back from work I thought I'll know what I'll do I will kind of measure this frame up cut a chunk out of the metal tree I need cutting out and at least then when it gets to dad's it's kind of less messing about for him to do and he'll kind of have an idea of how it's got to go and where he's got to weld so I've shown him some pictures well last night I started cutting away Whee, I'm a master craftsman I went through the one piece of tube like it was butter. I cut the next piece, ping! Broke the axle blade. I thought marvellous. This was at quarter to ten last night in the shed. Um, so I thought, right, what am I going to do? Obviously, there was no answer to it. I hadn't got a spare hacksaw. I hadn't got any spare blades. I had got a three-inch bit of blade. What was left? So I thought, come on Craig, you and your brilliant ideas, you can make this work. So I guess what I did, I held a tiny piece of hacksaw blade like that, with a pair of pliers, and I cut through the other side of the tube. I did it. It took me 
about, f I think I looked at the time, 53 minutes to cut through, uh, I think it's what, 15 mil the tube? 15 mil steel tube? So the other side I managed to cut through in about 3 minutes, 53 minutes with this tiny little XOR. Like this. I don't think the blade was actually cut in the tube. I think it was just the amount of friction heat. I think it must have melted the steel and gone through it. So when I got round to my dad this morning, showed him when I told him the story, yeah, I broke the blade, dad, you know, but I've managed to cut it. He went, yeah, just bring it here, son. Let me do it properly. I think that said it all, let me do it properly. I bought myself these trousers yesterday, these Oxford Wildfire 2. Um, I had the jacket for Christmas, the Montreal 3. Um, fantastic jacket, absolutely fantastic. I've got the air vents in it ready for the summer. It's waterproof, it's got a thermal liner. The previous jacket I had um, was comfortable, but I brought it second hand and the thermal liner was missing. Jesus Christ, it was like riding in a vest. So anyhow, the wife brought me this one. Lovely, lovely jacket. Um, got me leathers up. I like leather trousers purely for the protection um, but I've got to say sometimes in the summer especially last summer when we had them 30 plus degrees is oh my life I was like do you remember Ross in Friends when he gets the leather trousers stuck on and he's trying to put talcum powder on to get them off that was me although I've got my base layers on obviously the leather's good but in extreme heat oh and plus, obviously, your leathers, you don't want them too loose. You want it a bit more fitted. So, obviously, movements is, has a bit of few restrictions. So, anyhow, I thought, right, get some textile trousers. I want some textile trousers. Looking around, obviously, loads about. All different types. But I've got to say, I have always been happy and impressed with Oxford products. And I thought, I'll tell you what, it would be nice to get some trousers similar to my jacket so I looked around um, found a few different types of Oxford but I really liked the look of these wildfire and it was exactly the same kind of construction as the jacket it's got the nice material outer layer it's got a waterproof layer underneath that and they've got thermals in them which are removable and it also has air vents same as the jacket I thought ooh them look nice. So I looked around, yeah, saw the average prices. Had a look. I don't often look on eBay. I normally just go straight to. I don't want to go straight to Amazon. But anyhow, looked on eBay, and there was a lady selling a pair just round the corner from where I worked, and I thought, oh, okay. I thought that's going to vent. Funny shot. The bike made a funny noise, and I know the fans just kicked in. But it turns out so much rattling. Anyhow, um, yes, yeah, so I contacted this woman. Um, the trousers was in my size, and she's, uh, the comment was, but they are the short leg version. Well, as you'll probably gather, and going forward you'll probably hear more of from Matt, Steve and Rich taking the, the peace drill out of my legs. I'm not the tallest person, I think I'm what, 5'10". So I'm 5'10". Um, so not a real proper short arse, but my legs are not the longest. I think my body's, I think my body's about 5 foot and my legs are about 10 inches. So, whenever I get leathers, they fit nice, but I normally find the knee pad is kind of down by my shin. And then obviously when you put your boots on, I have to then push the knee pad up, because it sticks because it sticks down in the boot. So when I'm standing up, the knee pads, they're sticking out like this. So when she said they were short leg, I thought, amazing, Hoxford obviously have heard about me and thought when we make trousers we need to cater for Craig so I got these trousers at a bargain price they was brand new with all the tags on £45 I thought £45 for a pair of Oxfords is a fantastic price they're brand new so they're not worn got all the tags on 
sorted it out, round there, picked them up, bing bang bosh, got my trousers. Dad wants the bike, I said, I'll tell you what, I'll put my trousers on, let's go into the round bike. I've got to say, wow, textile trousers, oh, I am converted. I am converted. I mean, it's not, not, it's what today, 26th of January. It's not particularly freezing today, it's six degrees out, so not the warmest day, not the coldest. But even with my leathers and my other jacket in this weather, I'll be a bit like, Bruh, you know, you know, when you're just feeling the cold. You're not freezing, but you're feeling the cold. Not today. Oh man, I'm feeling good. And I'll tell you what, these will be amazing in the summer when I can take the thermals out and open the vents up. And plus they're nice to walk around in, they're comfortable, my legs don't feel restricted. So, I is quite looking forward to these trousers in Snowdonia. And I've also, um, I've got on the boots Richie give me. I don't know if, oh I can't see. I've got my little black ankle boots on, um, which I think, I think they're Akito. Akito, Akito, something like that, which given me. Um, and they're so padded and thick and thermal inside, they're amazing. I actually wore these when we went out for Christmas to see Santa. Some of the warmest things I've ever had on my feet. Uh, I mean, I love my RST track tech boots, but because um, they're the race ones, they're perforated, so obviously a bit of cold wind. Yeah, your toes certainly feel it. So now, I am fully geared up for travelling and driving in the Arctic Circle. <laughs> Why do we work? Dad's! Come on, Dad, open the gate. So, Dad's having the bike. Um, we're not doing it today. He just said, leave it with me. Um, I'll put it in the garage. Um, he said, so I can play with it, I can get the top box on, he said, just so I know I can get it. <coughs> so I can get it all lined up and in the right position and making sure I've got it level, so, yep. I'll bring in the bike here. Um, I said, I'll bring my paddock stand, so at least the bike's up straight, so, and the top box, you wanted that, so, those are in the back of the wife's car. <laughs> right, let's just wait for the birthday bike. Where is he? Is he going to open the gate? And I need to, uh, I need to look at replacing this. Get an ultimate add-ons one. I mean, this has been good, but it's proper, proper thin and flimsy. And that's the the mount at its tightest fitting. So, so as you can see, I'm riding with the sat nav. By the time you've done ten miles, it's it the engine's vibrated and it's down, it's down there. There's Ricky's less ride sticker on the tank. Are you in, Dad? Oh, hold on a minute, I think the gate's open. Oh, there's me expecting my dad to um, wait on my hand and foot on his birthday. I think he's already done it. Let's have a look. Yep, it's open. <laughs> You tit. <sighs> Let's leave her here and we'll get the gates open, garbage open in a bit. We'll get her all set up in his den. That's definitely the fan on the radiator. What's that rattling for? That's that garage where everything gets fixed. As you can imagine, he has to fix all of our cars. And these, right, what we've got here, 
we will see actually when I, when I get the bike in the garage. That one's my brother's Porsche. Now this one, which my dad is currently doing up, is I think it is 19. I think it's 1952 Ford Prefect. So that's the two-door one. I think it's a three-speed gearbox in the garage. He's got one he's already fully restored and done. In there is the 19, I think it's the 19, the 1950, oh, what's happened here? Oh, my brackets come loose. Oh, I can't get my seat off. You donkey. 1954, four door, I think it is, <coughs> four or five door. Ford Prefect, that one's all done, restored, he has that one on the road, he uses that, so, I need to look at that, I've obviously, I've had to remove the lock under the passenger seat to do the top box, I've put it back on temporary, but obviously I didn't, I didn't tighten it enough, so the bracket's now moved, I can't open the passenger seat, donkey, right, let's go into the birthday boy. Hey! He said he don't want a McDonald's because he's got the green dummy dodgers. Okay then. <laughs>